infringement. <laughs> oh, that it's recording now. It got all that. It got the infringement. <laughs> <laughs> it got the infringement. Well, anyway, hi guys. Hey guys, it's New Media, and we're back again for another segment of System Update. I'm Kayla Madera, and I'm Adam Shoemake. Now let's get started. So. Uh, this go around, we have the March 2017 Game Informer, and uh, <laughs> you guys don't know a secret, but uh, <laughs> Adam's oh. over here giving me a uh, thumbs up and a good job due to a mistake I made last podcast. It was it was great. So apparently, I thought it was still 2016. <laughs> Stop so. living in the past, Kayla. <laughs> So go to your Game Informer and switch to the first page where you can look up at your products list. And so with the GameStop Power Up Rewards, we have the Pro Member Exclusives. And they actually have these charge reports, which they've been out for a while now. Um, but they have some uh, that are going to be on sale. You can save $5 if you use your uh, Power Ups card. And uh, me and Adam were talking about it earlier and we both own them. I would say... From my experience with it, the only thing that drives me crazy is the fact that while it's charging, it makes like a silent screaming thing. Yeah, You're like like, like, like the mosquito it. ringtone. Yeah, you don't hear it for a while, but then when you like walk past it, you think that you're going crazy or that there's an electrical <laughs> problem. Yeah. But that's the only complaint I have. The light's not bad. I no. like how it turns green. It tells me it's done. And it's like, hey, stop, wait, wait. Okay, we're good. Yeah. So I I currently got a uh, PlayStation 4 stand kind of base. I don't know if it's stand or base. It says stand on the box. But uh, you can plug up to four controllers into that. Problem is with that, there's no way of telling um, if they're charged or not until you take them off and turn them on. Um, It does have a really annoying bright blue light that's like pretty much if someone put one of those red dots in your face. (laughs) And then... uh, it has a fan on it, which is good, but there's a lot of plug-ins, and uh, I feel like it gets my PlayStation hotter than it would without it. So those are the two chargers that I've had in my life, but luckily for you guys, the one that I like best is on sale. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, what else is over there? Let's say, oh, we're talking about, also, also we got headsets. Let's see, you can save $20 on a... Recertified XO4 Stealth gaming headset with bass boost from for Xbox One. Everyone loves bass boost. It looks like it's from Turtle Beach, but now I'm going to talk about my headset. My headset's way better than that. <laughs> I have the Afterglow per- Parismatic wireless headset, and this works really cool. Afterglow has always had really good products, though, for a oh, better yeah. price. Yeah, but uh, this, he- this headset actually works with everything. I've tested it with Xbox One and PS4. And it works along with 360 and PS3. Works for your 3DS, your PC, and it works with your phone. Yeah, the Glow just has that one cord that plugs in. It doesn't have oh my god, like Xbox One plugins for their mic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, this this one's really amazing. Like you can, there's a button on the side you can hit and hold, and it'll like slowly start changing color. And wherever you want your color at, you just like let go of it, and it locks it in. But the bad thing is, once you turn it off and turn it back on, the color goes back to blue. <laughs> It doesn't remember what color. See, I purchased the half headsets and stuff where um, it has the one side, but you don't get to really choose color. It's whatever you buy. Yeah. And so I had a blue one and a green one and a red one. And that's kind of like how I deciphered whose headsets they were. <laughs> and uh, it was the one where it had the uh, the one earphone with the mic connected to it. And on the other side, it was just a grip kind of to hold the side of your face. Yeah. But uh, that one was really good. I really like them. Um, I I don't have them anymore because I haven't been playing online on Xbox as much anymore. And sadly, I have returned back to the old Android phones with the <laughs> their headsets that had the little mic and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So that's what I use for PlayStation. I don't have a headset. I just have headphones with a mic. But yeah. I really love this headset because an additional feature is has three different settings. One, there's a bass boost where you can actually hear, like, you know, it increases the bass. Mm-hmm. Then there's one that's true sound where it's, like, everything's, like, really crisp and clear. And then there's a variable sound, which is, like, the whole spectrum, like, all rolled into one. It's it's really good. What was the price of that one? Do you remember? Uh, When I bought it, which was several years ago, 
I want to say it was where I got it for like a hundred dollars. Yep, new a hundred dollars at GameStop. That's when I bought it. I don't know. I don't know if GameStop still carries those. You might have to go to Amazon or wherever to find those. With the product list, um, I'm sure you guys that have looked at Turtle Beach headsets know that they're around seventy dollars. And so with the power up rewards, you get twenty dollars off, which makes it fifty. And so that's actually a decent price for those, but it's still more than Afterglow and their products. Yep. I won't complain. I know that on uh, if you look also in your book, there's Turtle Beaches that are Bluetooth. But those are so expensive. You can get a $50 off with your rewards. And so that makes you think about it. You're like, wow, $50 off. Then you find out that they're 300 at regular price. Wow. You might as well just buy a new game system. Yeah. Okay. And so now we're probably going to go um, to Adam, and he's going to do an overview of Persona 5. All right. Persona 5. I've been I've had this game pre-ordered for 3 months you guys. It's it's no joke. I just picked it up yesterday uh Tuesday and I haven't got to play it cuz homework. Ugh. But no. Life. Yeah. Real life <laughs> it sucks. Don't don't grow up guys. Don't grow up. Anyway, um Persona 5 is the 6th installment of the Persona series. It and the, yeah, this is the first game since 2008 with featuring a whole new voice cast. Um, by day, players go to high school, they hold down a part-time job, and visit cities like Shibuya and Akibara, which Persona 5 takes place in modern-day Japan, much like the other Persona games. But by night, players steal the malice from people's hearts as members of the Phantom Thieves. And this is really cool because this game... It's, it's new for the game because it inter- like in the old games, you, you went through dungeons, you defeated enemies, and you found... Uh, treasure boxes which helped you which like new weapons money armor so on and so forth but in persona 5 they added a puzzle element like let's say you're let's say you're you see a chest behind this fence you have to find a way to open the gate to get into the treasure box and it's 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 been so long since a new persona game has come down I'm like yes as soon as i saw this i'm like i have to pre-order it but yeah so when do you think you'll have time to actually start playing it? Hopefully this summer. So I'm hoping that the summer is like not too bad because um, if he can, then we can actually do our reviews because we seem to have start this kind of thing where we do an overview of a game that's coming out soon or it just came out and then we were going to try to do reviews so that we can talk about those games that we discussed before and how it is playing it and actually from our perspective. Yeah. Do you have anything else to add about Persona 5? Mm, if you guys haven't played the Persona series, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. There's like a ton of game time. Like Persona 3 FES is broken into two parts. There's the journey, which is 70 plus hours, and then there's the answer, which is 30 plus hours of gameplay. So, do you have to play them from the beginning? No. You think? No, you can like if you pick up a three, you can play. You can play beat three, and then you go to four, and then four kind of re- like kind of references back to three a little bit, but it's like nothing like major spoiler wise. But yeah, I highly recommend the Persona series. It's really really good. Isn't there a show for it? Yeah, they ha- they ha- they had a there's yeah they had a, a two uh, animated series Persona three and Persona four. I haven't seen those yet though because you know spoilers. <laughs> I don't like spoilers. Yeah, I can understand that. And so um, next, I'm going to be discussing Horizon Zero Dawn, and uh, this game uh, it actually came out at towards the end of February, and. Um, I was really excited about it, mostly because how it looked. But once I saw more trailers about it, I thought it would be a game that I wouldn't be interested in. So I decided to um, look up some of the YouTubers that you know get early release games, to, so I can see and get an idea before I purchase it. And so while watching reviews, I realized that this game, okay, I don't have a 4K TV, and so I'm like watching this, and I was like, this game is so beautiful. It makes all my games look so sad. <laughs> and uh, it's it's something where you play the game and then you're like, oh, okay, this is a fighting game. It has robots and weapons. That's cool. 
and then you actually realize that it has an amazing storyline and you get like addicted to the storyline and this my friends is how I have not bought the game nor have I played it due to the fact that I sat there the whole time watching a YouTuber play through the game because I wanted to know the story. <laughs> so that tells you this is a really good story. And um, it's made by Gorilla Games. And uh, it's really nice. It's, an, it's supposed to be an open world, which I would say, to the least, it is an open world. It's not like God of War preview where they tell you that it's not an open world, but it looks so much like an open world. Yeah. You just like follow a trail. Uh, this one's an actual open world. You can uh, do many things. For people who have played something like Dragon Age, it's kind of like that when it comes to dialogue. So it's a real big RPG thing. Uh, you can choose decisions that uh, affect your relationships. And uh, it's really cool um, because if you imagine, so you have like a prehistoric look to it and then all of a sudden you have tons of robots. And the game actually starts where you can play the main character as a child and you can run through these like, I'll say remnant, but uh, you can run through these areas of like past lives. And so there's a huge cave and it's like 3000 era. <laughs> like it's beyond our years in technology. Yeah. And uh, she gets this headpiece where um, this ruins that looks just like metal and, you know, bones, she puts on this headpiece and presses a button, and then she sees so much stuff. Like, she can see different types of technology. She can scan things uh, when she fights. Um, all she uses it for, she can use it to target people. So she can find weak spots and stuff, such as the robots. No one knew how to take out the robots that you see in the trailer. Yeah. And as a child, she's using this thing and her father thinks that she has a imaginary friend because she talks to it. <laughs> and it's kind of like a uh, if you imagine Siri on your head, like the Google Glasses Siri. Oh man. But no one can see that you have glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, uh she's talking to this person and they're explaining, you know, all the technology and the people and then once she finds new pieces and stuff in these hidden caves, she starts getting people's, like, memories and dialogue. And uh, it's really amazing, like, how far it stretches. And what I thought was really cool is that whenever it starts, it's not like a, oh, um, I'm this girl who comes from, like, a big family tribe. You know, I'm trying to find who I am. I don't want to be around them. Yeah. Instead, she's in exile before she's even lived her life. Wow. Before birth, she's in exile. Everyone hates her. <laughs> like, uh, her parents, they're all gone. Like, this is the first five minutes. You're like, I'm a child. My parents are all gone. Some guy adopted me. We're in exile. And kids pick on me and hurt me. <laughs> and that's about it. So... You're a child that's been told all their life that they can't do something. And then you find this, like, technology. And then you can rise beyond it all and fight. And you have that chance to become part of a tribe again. It's really cool. I would recommend play people playing it. If you like um, Age of Empires, uh, you know how, like, everyone in Age of Empire will talk about... I don't know if you played Age of Empire. They have, like, little storylines and stuff in them. It's I not the gameplay, but with Age of Empire, you have all these random dialogue stuff, which makes you want to stay and play the game, because <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like those sandbox like things, like the overview of war and all that. Yeah. I like storylines, and that's what most of those simulating games are, those mainly like simulation and RPG. Yeah. And so, uh, if you like games like that, and you would like to try a game where you're actually on the floor fighting things and all that that would be a really good one and then um what is it dragon age yeah, yeah dragon <laughs> if you like dragon age and stuff that's a really good one because of the story um choices and all that so if uh you have a system of course it's only ps4 so Persona, by the way persona 5 is ps uh, playstation exclusive you can get it for ps4 or ps3 yeah and so um if you have any PlayStation 4, then you can 
you can play this one. And then, of course, like you said, PlayStation 4 and 3 for Persona 5. Um, I would recommend, if you can't actually play it, to try to find a demo. You can find those on Steam really easy. Um, and so that's the game I'm covering. And then we're going to talk about our reviews. And so I believe that you have Alan Wake. Yep, I have Alan Wake. Okay. Um, Alan Wake is for the old, for the old last-gen 360 PS3. It came out in 2010. It was developed by Remedy. They, they're the ones that made Quantum Leap. That's out for the Xbox One. And they also ma- helped make the uh, Max Payne Max Payne series and really collaborated with Microsoft Studios. It was released in 2010. And pretty much the story before I start getting to like the finer points is, um, is this, and this is on the back of the case. It says, uh, when the wife of best-selling writer Alan Wake disappears on their vacation, his search turns up pages from a thriller he doesn't remember writing. A dark presence stalks the small town of Bright Falls, pushing Wake to the brink of sanity in his fight to survive, to unravel the mystery and save the woman he loves. Now this, like, the controls, I can, will admit they're a little, little, they're a little sloppy, but not by much. They're a little sloppy, but it's still, like, it's still a pretty, like, is still pretty tight. Is it, like, tight. a third person? Yeah, it's, it's a third person. Is it as bad as, like, Resident Evil games? No, no, it's, it's, no, it's nothing like the Resident Evil Okay, because those are bad controls. Yeah, those are, <laughs> those are very bad controls. I've played the Resident Evil games. They're not good. <laughs> but no, um, with this one, your job is to literally go through, as you go through the levels trying to get from one checkpoint to the other, to find these pages of a book you that he's wrote that kind of like foreshadows like what's coming up next for you to deal with. So the book was written... Before all of it happened? No, he the book was he wrote the book. He doesn't okay, he wrote the book. Mm-hmm. And then the pages got scattered. Okay. And so he and then it's kind of like it reset to, to the point in the past after the pages have been scattered. And so now he's got to f- try to figure out what happened to his wife and along the way he's got to try to find these pages to help him put together the story. So does he remember writing about it? No, like nothing at all. So is it like him seeing the future? Or? Yeah, it's like the pages give him a little bit of foresight of, into what happened and what's coming up next. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like it's really it's really big on the uh, on the lighting. It's like light, and by light I mean like light gray colors and mm-hmm. like black, like darkness, like it's in between. But when there is like legit light, it acts as like a health like a health restore. Like you can be almost dead and walk into uh, like a uh, street light mm-hmm. or just whatever light in general and it'll actually like heal you. you. You have a flashlight that you can use to defeat enemies. You get pistols and shotguns. It's That's so starting good. to sound like Silent Hill a little bit. No. <laughs> uh, it, it's really good. We'll, we're, I'll try to get, bring it in and so we can record it so we can put it up on our YouTube so you guys can see. And we'll, of course, there'll be discussion while the gameplay is going on. So what do you do for like during the gameplay? Like, how does it start? Uh, it starts by... The game officially starts when Wake is walking down the street and a character he made for a no, for an upcoming novel that he hasn't finished comes to life and, sees, try, and he tries to kill him. That's intense. It is very intense. This is where you learn all the controls. It's... I'm not doing a very good job explaining. It's it's <laughs> it's just something you like have to watch. The story is really good. I'll have to check it out. And hopefully that'll be one of our screen caps soon. Hopefully, we're we're trying, guys. We're trying to get screen caps. Yeah, I promise. Read on us. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's all about all I got for Alan Wake. Okay, and so I guess that leaves me. Yep, that leaves you by your little lonesome. And this awaited review. Dun, so, dun. as you guys know, I pre-ordered Mass Effect, got the deluxe edition, which Look. pretty much just consisted of the only thing I used from there, which is a pistol and a hoodie. <laughs> so I spent $20 extra for that. <laughs> um, it's, I don't know. Okay. So I will say that everything, all the reviews told me, everything Game Informer lied about, because no one knew about the game till it was actually released. Because, okay, see, 
I'm talking about um, Horizon Zero Dawn earlier. Mm-hmm. Gameplay of that was out a month before its release date. Gameplay for Mass Effect was the night it was going to be released. Like, wow. five o'clock. People were beating it in like like two or three hours. <laughs> like speed run. Like skipping dialogue. And just trying to do everything they can. And uh, I was like, oh my gosh. It's happening. And so it finally... Oh, there was another thing. All over America. Okay. Okay. I'm sure all everybody over in PlayStation understands or knows about this, but everyone had trouble downloading the game. <laughs> if you got the digital copy, you have to click. I had to click on it in the room, like uh, in the forum. I was looking, everyone was having problems just downloading games in general that night. And so my download, I bought it, right? Yeah. Download would not start. Ooh. And I was like, what the heck? And so I was like, I could, I'm supposed to download this so that at midnight I can play it, which actually turned out to be 10 o'clock when I could play it. But I was like, what the crap? So I turned off my PlayStation, turned back on. I was like, I'm going to download this sucker and, uh, and get this. There's no download button anymore. <laughs> and so it's like probably wrong. I was like, one o'clock, because I didn't, I didn't think about it when I pre-ordered it. I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, and then I was like, ooh, the day of. I was like, it's going to take me, like, four hours to download, so I'm just going to pop it up in there. So this <laughs> is, like, one o'clock, okay? Ten o'clock is when the game's ready to be played. Yeah. No download button. I'm freaking out. I'm so mad. I was like, hey, I bought this game early. I want to play it early. And so I get to the point where I start going back into the dark forums where people talk about the weird stuff. And... <laughs> You know, whenever you Google, like, why is it Mass Effect downloading or something, and then you go through all the forums and stuff, and you find the most recent one, and it just happens to be, like, a comment in, like, the weirdest section of Google. Yeah. And so I'm on there. It's not even a PlayStation forum. It's, like, a Reddit oh. about, like, sex in video games. Oh, And no. people are like, no, we're talking about Mass Effect. My Mass Effect game isn't loading. <laughs> <laughs> and so I sat there and waited in that Reddit forum for, like, an hour. And then someone said that uh, what you have to do was go to your library and click on it and then uh, search through the library for the game, click on it through there and click download. You can't go to the game and click download at all. Wow. And this was six (laughs) o'clock. So um, I played the game like 15 minutes after it was playable, but I still got to play the game. But I will tell you so many things were different um i'll say the characters um i like them because they all have different voices and they're like different personalities before i could probably compare a few of the mass effect characters to each other uh let's see there are new characters um well of course there are new characters there are new species that's what i meant to say um i don't know how i feel about the new species yet because I've still been playing it, and of course I like to scrape the bottom of the sea, so I've been doing all the side missions. <laughs> I haven't even, like, I met two new aliens, and I haven't even done anything except explore the galaxy, and they're like, so when are we going to go here? And I'm like, never, because <laughs> so I'm busy. Uh, Yo, so, poor, in games like that, you always do the side quests first. And what's amazing about doing the side quest is that you get so much resources just by exploring other planets that your mission's not on, because mm-hmm. the mission... It's so hard to, like, go and do the main one, the, like, Trail of Hope, when you see all these different places that you haven't even touched before. Yeah. And uh, I will tell you that my weapon, if anything's going to come at me in the main part of the game, I have my weapons, like, so enhanced (laughs) because all the research data that I've collected from exploring (laughs) different planets. And it's so exciting. And so... Let's first talk about what was supposed to be in the game through what I was told like five days before the game came out and then it all (laughs) changed. Um, So, uh, Alec Ryder, your father, it says that, you know, he's a Pathfinder, but it doesn't ever show him around. And then I was like, this is when all the trailers started coming out. Like five, like a week before the game came out. I was like, this is where you guys throw trailers? I couldn't go anywhere without seeing a trailer. And I'm looking at this trailer. I'm like, holy crap. Alan Wake is with his daughter. And I was like, okay, well, that's something that they lied about. Uh, well, I won't say lie. Maybe they just didn't know and made assumptions and everyone thought it was the truth. And so, um, like, yeah, 
talked about, you know, his mom, or you know, say his mom, but Ryder's mom. Depends if you're a guy or a girl. And uh, it talks about the father and, you know, not being in their lives, but then being back in their lives as a pathfinder. And uh, it's just so much different things that had happened. Uh, the way that your brother's in a coma. The very beginning of the game, your brother's in a coma. He never had a chance. <laughs> 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 and uh, everyone's so relaxed. And I, <laughs> the comments are so great. Uh, I've probably never enjoyed a Mass Effect like wittiness until this game. <laughs> My person says so many different things. Like I remember they were like, okay, well, everyone's pointing a gun at our ship. And I'm like, well, I'm a pathfinder. And then they're like all arguing about what we should do. And then uh, this one chick's like, they're going to kill you. And you had a choice of saying, you know, oh, well, lighten up or... Um, should I be worried? And so I'm like, oh, lighten up. And as I'm leaving, I'm like, hey, guys, just know that if I die horribly, at least make me sound great. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, it's all these amazing comments. And uh, it's so funny because your person, they have, like, so many, like, face movement things. Like, my person looks like a crazy, like, crazy Amazon woman. Like, her eyes get huge when she makes jokes. And it just makes me laugh so hard. Um, the aliens are really cool. The, not the first ones you meet because they want to kill you. Um, (laughs) but the second ones you meet are really cool. Um, they kind of remind me of a Valerian because how they stand, but they're like a snake with a Valerian face, (laughs) but their eyes are huge and, uh, they're really cool. Uh, The technology story behind it is really good too. Um, I like fighting robots more than the aliens, so that's nice. Oh, and the fact that it's open world and you can take your vehicle everywhere, which I was mad because the vehicle we had before you couldn't really do anything with. This one you can go everywhere. You have a choice between a freaking six-wheel drive and a four-wheel drive, so you can drive straight up, like at a 90 degree. (laughs) And uh, I I use that so many times. And also, if you feel like you need to run things over, which sometimes I do, I, like, constantly am running over animals, <laughs> and I, sometimes I don't see them because I'm, like, ramping off of stuff, and uh, it's just, okay, a lot of people, I want to go over some complaints people had. Um, one, they said that the dialogue was trash, and I was like, oh, yeah, the dialogue's trash because all it is is jokes. Like, it is, if you watched a comedy show, and you're like, man, I thought some of this was funny, and you're like, no, nah, I'd I don't know if I'm laughing or if I'm watching the show or not. Yeah, there's a lot of funny stuff. And uh, a lot of choices that you make will change people's dialogue. So people were complaining because they are like, one of my favorite characters has no respect for me. I was like, well, you chose the wrong choice. (laughs) (laughs) And um, you are setting up like an entire camp. You make every decision. You're like, oh, okay. What are we going to place here first? And you're like, well, I need a military because everything here tries to kill me. (laughs) And then they'll be like, oh, well, fine. You're a jerk. Maybe (laughs) I wanted to do science. I'm going to ignore you for the rest of this game. And I'm going to say bad things about you. You also have a choice over people's life and death. Oh, my gosh. They'll be like, what should you do? And I'm like, I don't know. Get along. And they're like, oh, yeah. Real inspiring, Pathfinder. I'm like, God (laughs) dang it. (laughs) I have no respect because all I do is make jokes and then I compliment people. Like when the new alien got on and I was like, we're just going to be friends. And they're like, no one's listening to you, Pathfinder. (laughs) And then one girl, the girl that wanted science and stuff, or no, she wanted me to put the colony there first before the military. And I was like, oh, no, everyone would die. (laughs) And she was like... She was like, okay, writer. I was like, well, I'm the Pathfinder. And she's like, you're not a Pathfinder until you found a path. And I was like, oh, God. Oh. I was like, why are they so mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then the second complaint was everyone's like, these voices are bogus. These voices are not bogus, okay? If you were going to complain because your alien market man sounds like a Hispanic that has never passed first grade English, it's not his fault. <laughs> okay, these are voice actors that are actually not just from the United States. They have accents. And so you got Australians. Like, there's like three Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> one of them sounds like an angry one. <laughs> and then you've got the one that I was talking about that sounds like, you know, he didn't pass first grade. He talks really slow. 
And then you have the one who uh, just says random Hispanic words every now and then. <laughs> and of course, the one that uh, sounds like he hadn't passed first grade is not even human. The one who talks fast uh, sounds a human and the other one's a human. And then you have the Australians. Yeah, those are really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have much to say about the Australians. The Irish, there was an Irish man on uh, Mass Effect before. He was in the engine room. I was like, oh my God, this guy is so cool. He's the only one with an accent. And then now there's Australians everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I don't know, it's really interesting uh, how they mixed it up. But people are complaining about the voices. And also, um, I don't, have you heard about Krogan? You've seen the Krogan. They're like the, the largest alien race on the oh, game. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That look like quarterbacks. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so people were talking and they were like, oh, my gosh, the, in the trailer, that uh, Krogan sounds so, like, feminine. It's a woman. Just so you know, it's a woman. She sounds like she's in her 70s, <laughs> but it's a woman. Well, okay then. And uh, it's just all these complaints that I see online are just like, oh my gosh, this game like, is terrible. Like really petty. Uh, yes. And then people are like, oh my God, these graphics suck. I was like, oh, why does the graphics suck? And then there's some kids like, the art and stuff and the face, it's not even any better than Mass Effect, like the other ones. And I was like, well, um, you do realize that the art hasn't changed, so it's still Mass Effect. I was like, if they upgraded all the facial features and stuff, it wouldn't be like playing Mass Effect anymore. Like, I don't know how many people will play Fallout. Okay, Fallout 4, amazing game. Graphics, could use some work. Okay, it's the same, it's the so, same so, all the so way it's, through. So it's like someone playing Borderlands. And oh, then yes, go, and, and complaining then like, about Borderlands. And then complaining about how Borderlands 2 looks. Yes. So what do they want? Like, Borderlands graphics and then just switch, like, I don't know, Gears remastered? Like, oh, super realistic. Yeah, I'm assuming, and I was like, but then it wouldn't be Mass Effect. Like, yeah. I can't... Okay, think about this. They didn't destroy all the races in Mass Effect for this new one, okay? These are all the same races and different ones. And so imagine if you had the races from a regular game and then pulled in some fancy art, and so this one race now looks like a snake, and you're like, okay, well, what's up with their skin? kind of thing you know someone's gonna complain all the time yeah there's there's always those people out there and so i don't know the game beat my expectations because the world beat down my expectations <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah it was it's really worth it uh i play it all probably like three times a day <laughs> i take breaks you take breaks yeah like when i wake up and when i get home after dinner <laughs> <laughs> but i have been taking more breaks because i've been playing some other games too but Mass Effect is fun. Don't let people tell you what they think about it and not to play it because that is only you that can make that choice. So that's my review. <laughs> Sounds like Mass Effect might actually be kind of inter new. Mass Effect might be entertaining. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, I played that. I played it so much. I don't know how many hours I've put it yet, but I've played it so much, and I'm not even. I'm probably at like the second main mission. Wow. <laughs> but I have like so many um, one thing I will say about it that um, at first I didn't like is the menu so when you open up the menu it's kind of like a giant circle uh, where you have to choose different selections yeah and kind of like choose... kind of like in GTA where you had to rotate oh, the analog stick yes okay yes and uh, I was like okay it's not bad it's nice looking but when you click on the journals which is where all your missions are you're automatically put into the folder where the main missions are and so for the longest of time i would get so mad because i'd have to go back to people click on them to get their main mission to pop up again and then hold the option button so it automatically opened it and so then i realized that you have to hit back which i would have thought took me out of journals but instead it took me out of the folder of main missions <laughs> and then i see like a plethora of all these different options and i was like oh look companion oh, look, science, oh, look, this. And I was like, there's about eight different folders for missions. Wow. Like, science and research is its own thing. And I was like, that is so awesome. And uh, so that's what I've been doing because, you know, it was hidden from me. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, um, I really like the game. 
People complain about music. They said that it sounds like they just put the old track on and then added random bass noises in the background. Honestly, I don't care. I don't I don't really focus on the music because I'm playing the game. <laughs> now, if I wanted an orchestra playing, I'd probably like to actually see that. <laughs> yeah. But the game in general, I, I give it a thumbs up. Mm, that's good to know. <laughs> so for all, of you, all, the, all those of you who are looking for a new open world game, Mass Effect Andromeda. Get it. <laughs> okay, let's see. What else is on the itinerary over there by you? Oh, you know, when we talk about our hopes and dreams for a screen cam. <laughs> yeah. We haven't got overcooked yet, guys. We're apologizing. We apologize. Well, at this point, I think me and you is the only one that's actually attempting to keep this thing going. Me and Adam apologize. We, me and Kayla apologize <laughs> for the lack of most of what I'm looking for. Bodies. Yeah, la- lack of bodies. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we could try to, like, both have, like, two controllers and run around and do stuff, but it'd just be terrible. Yeah, it, it wouldn't be very well. There'd be, there'd be a lot of pew, 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 pew noises. No, yeah. I don't know if you guys listened to our first podcast. We had talked about it earlier. We were trying to figure out what to do over um, Adam's cursing during screen caps. So we decided the Star Wars gunshot noises. Yep, I, I develop Tourette's when I play video games. Don't we all? <laughs> a little bit. I don't know. My my main agitation is probably on the new game, the Ark Survival. I say it's new, but it's been around for like two years, still in alpha stage. It's not even out there as new. It's just updated <laughs> all the time. But yeah, that would be one of those. But we promise, guys, we're trying to get screen caps going. And also, what would help us with our motivation and stuff is if you shared, liked, and commented and subscribed to us because we need people to care yeah we're no one no one likes us love us please <laughs> and uh of course we'll go through the whole you know oh add us on facebook at uafs new media um or you can go actually our youtube if you're listening to this i hope you're on youtube <laughs> <laughs> hopefully um yeah subscribe to us on youtube and we would love to get messages from you guys and just know like what you want us to cover or not or if you want to be in a conversation we have stuff here where we can put you on a phone line yeah and so that would be fun too we need more people yeah so Uh. thank you guys for listening this is kayla and this is adam and you were listening to system update (laughs) well it's gonna be cut out in post anyway so no i'm pretty sure i made so much noise make it